Hey guys, welcome back to Survival Prepping for Normal People. I wanted to do a follow-up video about something I mentioned uh, in a past video. And a lot of you as survivalists and preppers, you may or may not pay attention to politics as much as you probably should and why it is so important. Um, and I'm not talking about politics like who got like the dog catcher, who the mayor of your local city is, things like that. I'm talking about historical politics. Not so much orange man bad, um, Hillary Clinton is crooked, all those kind of things. Um, those are all distractive politics. But I want to talk about what happened in California and why. And why it is so important to the future of our country. Why they don't want to close the border why it probably will never be closed. And people are starting to show a lot of frustration. You got these militias in New Mexico rounding people up. And then of course the militia leader gets arrested by the FBI. Who knows? Um, I've talked several times about not getting involved with that for that particular reason. Um, there may come a time when you feel motivated to do something like that. Just weigh out all the pros and cons of making such a decision. Now we all understand that the government does not like the people to get involved and do their job for them. Their job is to take our tax money, say that they represent us, say that they're gonna take care of problems, of course the problems that they caused, and then when we get frustrated when they don't fix the problems and we do stuff like, I don't know, try to raise money to build a wall, they say, oh, you can't do that. It's federal government's job to protect the country. Okay, well then get off your ass and do your job. Oh, no, 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 they'll, they'll get around to it. Um, it's the government's job to stop illegal immigrants at the border. And when the citizens get involved and start doing that, oh, no, 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 you, you can't do that. That's the federal government's job. Okay, again, get off your ass and do your job. And they don't. So let's talk about something that I know quite a bit about, and that is California and Texas. I was born in Texas. Moved out west about eight or nine years old. Spent most of my life out there in California. As a teenager growing up in the 1980s in California, it was a golden age. It was an awesome place to be. Uh, learned to ride skateboards, do all that stuff. Um, of course, we had the gang activity with the Crips and the Bloods. It was very hot and heavy at that time. But you just had to know which areas to stay out of. Like any other major city in the world, it had its good parts and its bad parts. And if you were um, not from the bad areas, you didn't know the people there, you didn't know the ways, the culture, and all that stuff, it was probably best if you just steered clear, and that's how it was. Then, in 1986, President Reagan made the biggest mistake, I think, of his presidency when he approved the amnesty for all the illegals that were in the country at the time. They were trying to tackle the whole problem of illegal immigration, so they granted them amnesty. And the idea was that these people would get amnesty and that the borders would be controlled and everything would be great going forward. It'd be a highly regulated uh, system, a well-run, uh, like a well-oiled machine, right? Not so much. Okay. So what's important about Texas is the history of Texas. And I moved back to Texas 12 years ago uh, because I saw the decline um, out west and knew that things weren't going to get any better. And it had gotten to the tipping point where um, the politicians out there figured out that if you promise people enough free shit, they vote for you, and there's no coming back from that. There is no way a politician stands any chance of getting elected to any kind of statewide office when he stands up and says, you know, for the last eight years, people have been promising you free stuff, and it's caused our state to go into a lot of debt, but we need to fix that because everybody who pays taxes is leaving. Because the more free shit we promise you, the higher taxes have to be. Well, the people who make money and pay taxes don't benefit from the free shit. So they're leaving. They're going to other places like Arizona and Nevada and Texas. So what we got to do is stop giving everybody free shit and make sure everybody pays their fair share. Not a good message in a place where people are accustomed to getting free shit. Okay? Especially people from third world countries who can come to your state and get thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 a year in benefits, which doesn't sound like a whole lot of money, really, compared to the average American. But when they come from a country where they live off of $600 a year, 
That'd be the same as the Americans going to Canada and Canada saying, we're only going to give you $21 million a year in benefits. Let's go. Let's head north. I could, you know, I'll have to buy a jacket and snowshoes and shit, but it'll be worth it. Okay, so that's what you're facing. That's what happened in California. That's why it's never coming back. Now they want to do the same thing in Texas. Texas is very proud of its history. Texans are very proud people. Texas was the only state that was an independent republic before it became a state. It was never a territory. It signed treaties with the United States and it joined the United States as an independent republic. With its own army, its own navy, its own president, all that shit, right? Had its own money. Okay. Texas got started, what we know as modern Texas, after Mexico broke away from the Spanish Empire, Texas was wild Indian territory. It had a population of about a thousand people that weren't wild natives. Okay. Mexico wanted to better utilize Texas. It had a lot of resources. It had wide open plains, forests, rivers, lakes, mountains. I mean, beautiful place. So they wanted it to be better utilized and start being a net benefit for Mexico tax-wise. And lots of Americans were moving west, exploring. You know, you had Lewis and Clark in the early 1800s, and, you know, the whole Texas thing was in the 1820s. Well, the Mexican government set up a system where they would let impresarios, uh, land salesmen that were Americans, sell land to other Americans at very low prices to entice them to move into the Texas territory and settle it. And uh, they had to become Mexican citizens. They had to learn to speak Spanish. They had to convert to Catholicism and pay Mexican taxes. That was the deal. So a lot of Americans looking for opportunity took the deal. And they did. So the Texas population at that time went from like 3,500, just exploded to like 50,000 people. And that doesn't sound like a lot. But that kind of an increase would be incredible in, in, in today's um, ratios, right? So the Texas population exploded. And everything was great. And Texas got a new president, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. A military man who became the, I believe he was the second president of the Mexican Federal Republic. Or Federal Republic of Mexico. My Mexican history is a little shaky at times, so I apologize if I'm wrong. I think the first president's last name was Victoria. I don't remember his first name, but uh, from all accounts, he was a decent president when they broke away from Spain, and he had to manage a lot of things. And managing a brand new country, as you can imagine, would probably be very, very tough to do. So anyhow, President Santa Ana, who ran as a Federalist, okay, for those of you who know anything about history, that basically means limited central government, more representation of the people in the form of a republic. He ran as a Federalist, and as soon as he seized power, he got rid of the Mexican Congress, he tore up the Mexican Constitution, basically declared himself military dictator for life, reneged on all the deals made with these Texians, the Americans moving into Texas, and it kind of pissed them off. Okay. And there were lots of other issues. Mexico had banned slavery in 1829, which is a good thing, but a lot of the Texians moving in from America were coming in from the American South and had slaves with them. So that became an issue. Okay. Several issues. Well, Texians being former Americans, um, they have problems with taxation without representation. And you see, Mr. Santa Ana's idea was he was going to continue to tax the Texians, but not allow them to have any rights. And so <laughs> that gave these people the idea to have a revolution. And they did. And they took Texas from Mexico. And Santa Ana, being Mexico's worst president in history, ended up losing Texas to the Texians and then about half of the rest of his country to the Americans in the Mexican-American War. And then he got exiled to Cuba or something, I think. I can't remember. Anyway, terror, he did a terrible, terrible job. Terrible job. Probably one of the worst presidents in the history of presidents, right? People that ran republics, especially in the Western Hemisphere. Terrible job. But anyhow, so what's happened nowadays, moving to modern politics, is that people are moving out of California, the tax-paying people are moving out of California in droves, okay? They are losing more people every year moving out than are moving in, and the ones who are moving in are mostly illegal immigrants who really don't bring anything to the table. Santa Ana made a prediction before he died, and it basically formed the kernel of a plan they call Reconquista. 
where the people of Mexico would retake all their former territories that were taken by Texians and the Americans without having to fire a shot. And they would do this by just overwhelming the Americans with their poor people. So you see, the way it works is Mexico benefits by exporting all of their poor people so the Mexican government doesn't have to take care of them. Their poor people go one border to the north and become rich people. They send money back home. Mexico's second highest source of income after oil is money being repatriated back to their country by people in the United States working and sending money home. Okay. So, can I understand why a person would want to leave a corrupt system where everybody in your system is corrupt from the local police officer all the way up to the president of your country? Everybody's on the take. They're either working for the cartels or they extort you. And the way it works in Mexico, if you're not politically connected, is the same way it's always worked since it was a territory of Spain. It was basically divided up between 12 or 13 families who were administrators, area administrators of Mexico for Spain. And it was set up almost like a feudalistic system where it was a pyramid where everything funneled to the top and then the people at the top paid the Spanish crown. And the Spanish crown really didn't worry too much about how the people managed their business as long as they got business handled. And it's never changed. It's a systemically corrupt government. So I can understand why a man with a family would want to flee there and go to somewhere where there's more opportunity. I think one of the fundamental problems Americans have with illegal immigration is that it's such an un-American idea to run away from your problems. Because if we run, where do we go? And like Reagan said, you know, like I said, one of the worst mistakes he made was the whole amnesty thing. Terrible mistake. But one of the best speeches he ever gave was the shining city on the hill. And that if America is lost, freedom's lost for another thousand years. You can end up in some kind of bureaucracy where you have a person behind a desk working for a large government body deciding what your rights are whenever they get around to it. Or you can do what Americans have done, what Texans did, and that's fight for their freedom and their rights by standing up to people who would take them away. So you see, somebody made a comment about what's going on in Texas, and the reason they want to flood Texas with illegal immigrants is to Californicate it. They want to turn Texas into the next California. And if that happens, the rest of the country is probably pretty much doomed. Texas has a population of almost 30 million people. Texas, if it were a country now, would be the world's eighth largest economy. California, if it were an independent country, would be the world's sixth largest economy. And they already got a hold of it. Okay, so if the socialist Marxist Democrats are able to flip Texas through the use of invading hordes of illegal immigrants and promise them free shit, where are all the Texans going to run? And part of the problem with people having Arizona and Nevada and Utah and Idaho and Texas is that when all those Californians ran, they brought their bad ideas with them. You see, traditionally back in the 40s and 50s, when California had America's largest middle class and everything was great, people pretty much didn't want to cause waves. They didn't discriminate. They believed in live and let live, and they did. Until the enemies of a free society used their openness against them and basically ruined a beautiful place. It's never coming back. Cher said so herself, you can't send all the illegal immigrants here, we can't even take care of our own people. Congratulations. So what happens if Texas goes the way of California? Are all the taxpayers, the earners in Texas gonna move somewhere else? And where are they gonna go? What about all the people that move from California to Texas, are they gonna have to run again? Where does it stop? Where does it stop? So somebody left a comment and said, I'm a Texan and I'm worried about this too and it may be time to relocate. And I said, stop right there. Don't retreat a single step. If they flip Texas blue by the use of illegal immigration. And how many times have we tried to get voter ID acts and all that stuff passed here to make sure illegals can't vote? And then the the social Marxist uh, shop it to a liberal leaning judge and one man decides what 25 million people voted on can't be done. 
Yeah. They are like termites, the socialist Marxist Democrats. They eat the system from the inside out until it collapses in upon itself. Because their idea is they want to destroy the system. And from the ashes, a socialist utopia will rise. Texas is, a, is an impediment to that happening here in the United States. Now, there have been talks about Texas secession and a new Texas revolution and all these things. I don't know. It's incrementalism, one little baby step at a time. You turn up the heat just a little bit, and by the time the frog figures out it's boiling, it's too late, he can't jump out of the water. So, Texas is really a microcosm of what's happened to our country and what's going to happen to the rest of the United States. They want to destroy your culture. They want to destroy the pride in your history. And then they want to destroy your systems. Ultimately, bring it all down. Replace it with something dark, twisted, evil. Nope. I'm not going anywhere. There was a little town called Gonzales. It still exists. When Texas was still a Mexican territory, Comanche Indians, Native Americans, they were called the Cossacks of the West. They were some of the greatest horsemen the world had ever seen. Could fire their short bows while holding on to the horse's neck with their legs and fire under the horse's head and hit their target at full gallop. Even the Mongols would have had trouble doing that. So these raiders, these Comanches, they would raid all over Texas. And the Mexican army gave the uh, Texians of Gonzales a cannon because even though you didn't even have to hit the Comanches with the cannon, they were deathly afraid of it because it was so loud and it scared their horses. So when the Comanches would come to raid, the Texians would fire this cannon given to them by the Mexican army and it would scare the Comanches away. Well, when the Texians decided they didn't want to live under a dictator, basically the uh, Mexican version of Saddam Hussein, the Mexican army came back to Gonzales and said, we need that cannon back, please. Uh, it's probably not a good idea that you guys have cannons. Oh, and by the way, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, one of his first acts as president was to outlaw all militias, citizen militias, and to disarm all citizens in the Federal Republic of Mexico. Just so you know, history has a way of repeating itself. It's all the same steps, just done by different people. And it's all for the same purpose. They just give you a different excuse. But anyway, the good people of Gonzales made a flag. And on that white flag, they painted a black cannon and some words in black. And it said, come and take it. And they flew that flag the day the Mexican army came to take the cannon. And don't tell anybody. They didn't get the cannon back. Do not take one more step backwards. There will be nowhere to run. A lot to think about. How does this affect you as a survivalist and prepper? It's just one more way they're trying to tear down everything that you hold dear. Don't let them. So I want to ask you, what have you done today to get ready? And I want to thank you for being on the team.